All right, so now that we've kind of talked a little bit about chiral centers and also about the priority rules, now we're going to be talking about naming chiral centers either as R or S. Now, in many lectures and in many professors' um, lecture notes and many textbooks, whenever you're trying to name a chiral center R or S, they use a rule in terms of you put the lowest priority substituent in the back and then you treat it as a steering wheel and you drive the car, you drive the wheel. And it's also been in textbooks that I've read and also on also from other teaching assistants, other people I've heard. But I'm not going to be talking about that right now. Instead, I'm going to be talking about a different technique that I believe will be a little bit simpler and a little bit better to understand. And that's something called the right hand rule. Now, you might have heard the right hand rule whenever you're talking about torque or electricity in physics or in multivariable calculus. <laughs> but in this case, the right hand rule isn't really that complicated when you're dealing with it in organic chemistry. All right? So, how does the right hand rule work and how do we apply it when dealing with the RS convention of naming compounds? All right? So, first of all, we're going to talk about this compound. And we discussed it in the previous uh, in the previous video, and we determined that this was the only chiral center. Okay, so because this is the only chiral center, this is the only carbon atom that can either be called R or S, and we're going to be using the priority rules that we learned from the previous video. So, which of these which of these substituents has the highest atomic number? That's gonna that's what we've got to look at first. So this carbon is bonded to bromine, this carbon is bonded to hydrogen, this carbon is bonded to carbon, this carbon is bonded to carbon. So which of those carbon, hydrogen, or bromine, which of those have the highest atomic number? It's got to be bromine for, um, with its atomic number of 35, and therefore bromine is going to have the highest atomic, um, it's going to have the highest priority of 1. Right now, before we go to priorities number two and three, we're going to talk about what's the lowest priority. And in the majority of cases, it's going to be hydrogen because hydrogen is actually going to be um, it's going to have the lowest atomic number available, one. So as a result, it's going to have the lowest priority of four. Now, what about which of these substituents, two, uh, this one or this one, which of those are two or three? Now, remember, whenever you're dealing with parity, you look at the point of first difference, okay? So in this case, this is a carbon bonded to a carbon, and this is here is a carbon bonded to a carbon, right? This is a carbon-carbon bond. This is a carbon-carbon bond. So you might be thinking, uh, there is no difference yet. What do I do? Remember, point of first difference. Even though these are two carbon-carbon bonds, this carbon is bonded to three hydrogens. And this carbon is double bonded to another carbon, and this carbon is also bonded to an iodine. So this carbon, it's bonded to three hydrogen atoms. Each of those have an atomic number of one, very low priority. This carbon is bonded to an iodine atom. So when you're looking at the point of first difference, in this case, the point of first difference would be hydrogen. In this case, the point of first difference is either iodine or the double a bond to carbon. And whenever you're looking at a double or triple bond, it's just like having um, constituents. So instead of a double bond to carbon, you treat it that you treat it you treat it as if this carbon has a bond to carbon here and a bond to carbon there. That's how you deal with double bonds and triple bonds. It's kind of um, a similar thing. But in this case, you can see that the higher priority when you're looking at the point of first difference is with this carbon because it's bonded to ID and it has a double bond. This one is just a carbon bonded to three hydrogens. Nothing too exciting there. So as a result, this substituent is going to have a priority of number two, and this one is going to have a priority of number three. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, iodine has a greater priority than bromine. Shouldn't this be priority number one? No, because when you're looking at the first a set of atoms, the first atom is bromine. The first atom is carbon, all right? Bromine has a higher atomic number than carbon, so therefore, this is going to have the highest priority. So why do we care about point of first difference? It's not for these ones, because for these ones, there's already a difference at the first set of atoms. It's for these ones, for these two substituents, that we have to worry about the point of first difference. Because here we have carbon, 
carbon. Here we have carbon, carbon. This is where the point of first difference matters, not with these ones. You have carbon and then hydrogen, nothing too exciting. And here we have carbon, double bond to a carbon, and then single bond to an iodine. To an iodine. More exciting, greater priority, higher atomic numbers. This has a higher priority than this one, right? So hopefully that was a little bit clearer, right? So if we've assigned the priority, one, two, three, four. So how does the right-hand rule work? What, how the right-hand rule works is that you point your sum in the direction of the lowest priority substituent. So in this case, hydrogen is the lowest priority substituent, and in most cases, it actually is. So you're gonna point, so because hydrogen, it's um, bonded to carbon, with like a dashed line, that means that the hydrogen is pointing into the board. So you're gonna have the hydrogen, so you're gonna have your, your sum in the direction of hydrogen, pointing into the board, away from you, the viewer, okay? And your fingers can be curled in any direction. In this case, I'm gonna try to curl my, my fingers in the direction of, of bromine, the highest priority substituent. Then I'm just gonna curl my fingers of my right hand as normal. Just like that. Now, when you curl your fingers, if it maintains a normal progression, as in one, two, three, four, you assign the chiral center R. If order is not maintained, like if you go one, three, two, or two, three, one, then it's automatically R. So you can think of it as R is right order and S is just incorrect order, okay? Just remember, R is for right order. So in this case, again, I have my thumb here. I'm pointing it into the board because hydrogen is going into the board. I have my fingers like this, right? Um, it's in parallel with the bromine. I'm curling it. It goes from 1 to 2 to 3. 1, 2, 3 is going to be the clockwise direction. When I... My thumb is going into the board. My fingers curl in the clockwise direction. It goes from 1 to 2 to 3, just like that. So as a result, because order is maintained, because I'm going from 1 to 2 to 3, this chiral center is going to be R, okay? 1, 2, 3. And it might be a little bit confusing at first, but it... After practicing a lot more of it, you start to get the hang of it. And it's nothing too bad. It actually simplifies your life a little bit more than just driving the car. All right? Now we're going to look at this second example. Now, in the previous video, we determined that this compound has no chiral centers whatsoever. However, let's make a, let's make a brief change. What if you have this? Now you have four different substituents, right? Because this entire substituent is different from this because S and O, sulfur and oxygen, are two different atoms, which is different from all this, which is different from this. Four different substituents. One, two, three, four double bonds. This carbon is going to be chiral. And this carbon here is still a chiral because it's got a double bond. Same for this one, same for this one, same for that one. Remember, if a double bond is present, the carbon center is not going to be a chiral center, all right? So, this is the only chiral center we have in this case. How do we assign priority? Well, remember, iodine has, in this case, you have carbon bonded to carbon, carbon bonded to carbon, carbon bonded to hydrogen, carbon bonded to iodine. At, at the beginning, ignore all this. First, you look at the atoms that are directly bonded to the chiral center. That's the rule of sum. If you ever get confused, at the very beginning, just look at the atoms that are directly bonded to the chiral center. In this case, iodine is directly bonded to this carbon. Hydrogen is directly bonded to this carbon. This carbon here is directly bonded to this carbon. This carbon here is directly bonded to this carbon. We're going to deal with all the point of first difference stuff later. For now, let's just focus on the atoms that are directly bonded, that directly bind to the chiral center. So carbon, hydrogen, and iodine. Which one has the highest atomic number? It's got to be, it's gotta be iodine, with the atomic number of 53. Therefore, iodine has the highest priority of 1. Hydrogen has the lowest priority because it's got the atomic number of 1. Okay, its atomic number is 1, 1 proton. 
As a result, hydrogen, because it has the lowest possible atomic number, it's going to have, uh, oh yeah, because it has the lowest possible atomic number, it's going to have the lowest priority, which we're going to call priority number four. All right? And now we can start to deal with the point of first difference stuff, okay? So it's carbon bonded to carbon bonded to carbon. Nothing different. Look to the next set of atoms. Double bond to carbon, double bond to carbon. Still no difference. It doesn't matter. Go to the, go to the next set of atoms. Carbon bonded to sulfur. Carbon bonded to oxygen. Now we're getting somewhere. Now we have a point of first difference, okay? What's the atomic number of sulfur? 16. What's the atomic number of oxygen? 8. Because sulfur has a higher atomic number than oxygen, this entire substituent is going to be, it's going to have a higher priority than this one. So this is going to be priority number 2, and this is going to be priority number 3. All right? Now comes the curling your fingers part. Now comes the right hand rule part. Put your fingers in the direction of the lowest priority substituent. In this case, hydrogen was pointing into the pore, into the board, so we pointed our fingers into the board. In this case, hydrogen has the black wedge, so we're going to be pointing hydrogen out of the board towards you, the viewer. We can still curl our fingers in the direction of iodine. Okay, now we're going to curl. One, two, it's curling in the direction, it's curling this way. One to two to three. One to two to three. Two to three. It's, it's maintaining progression. It's maintaining successive chronological progression. Whenever you curl your fingers like this, it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. It's the correct order when you're counting. Because it's the correct order, this is going to be R. Now let's make a brief change. What if we change the stereochemistry? This is why stereochemistry is also important. What if we did what if we made a hydrogen pointing into the board and iodine pointing out of the board? What if we did that? What would what would it be in this case? So hydrogen points into the board, put your fingers in the direction of iodine, now curl your fingers. You go from one to three to two. You don't go one, two, three anymore. You go one, three, two, one, three, two. You're not going in the correct order. Because you're not going in the correct order, because you're not going in the right order, you have R. You, I'm sorry. Because you're not going in the right order, you do not have R. Instead, you have S. And that's how RS convention works. And in the next video, I'm going to be going over a more complicated example. All right? Thank you for watching.